work if there's no cross-examination? No. Let's, let's, this, is a, this is a segue to cross-examination. Yes. Yeah. I wanted to ask you to give us some, especially young lawyers out there who are watching, because uh, I, I remember when I was a young lawyer, I was, I was always very fascinated with the cross-examination part. Can you, can you tell us a, a little bit about how to be a great cross-examination cross uh, lawyer or even a party? Uh, how do you cross There is, uh, well, if you're, a, if you're a young lawyer, there's a really good book um, by a gentleman. There, it's actually two gentlemen, but I only remember one person's name. His name is Posner, P-O-S-N-E-R. Uh, I think it's called The Art of Cross-Examination. I have a copy somewhere, but we moved recently. I don't know where my big books are. Um, <laughs> I think it's called the art of cross-examination. Right. And the only things I really remember, I went to a one day seminar where the, he and the, his co-author uh, presented for a day. It was a fabulous seminar. And if you ever get the chance, um, uh, certainly young lawyers should go to it because it's monumentally good. Wow. Um, one fact per question, one fact at a time, right? Okay short questions, right? Um, I'm showing you this document. Do you see this document? Yes. What is this document? Oh. It's a contract. Thank you. Oh. Is this your name at the top of the document? Yes. You're the roofer, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but it's right. very difficult to do because again, you see the natural impulse is to want to to sort of put three or four of those together yes but it leaves the witness a chance to squeak out <laughs> it leaves the witness a chance to sort of squirt out of the cross-examination and move into something that's a distraction interesting so if you, you pin them down with a little tiny question so to which they can only answer yes or no <laughs> Right. right. So basically, uh, I, I guess the, I mean, I learned uh, when I was in law school that they're calling these leading, would these be leading questions? Is that what you're kind In cross-examination, those are permitted. Right. Leading questions. Right? Yeah. You can't do it in chief, but you can do it on cross-examination. And that's the general idea is to lead the witness. Mm -hmm. So in, a, in essence, mm -hmm. depending upon um, whether the witness is agreeing with you, they might not be, right. um, but that doesn't matter um the 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 strange part is that it's more or less the lawyer giving the evidence and the witness confirming it's correct right right this is the contract that you had with mrs smith isn't it yes and you're john smith aren't you yes right so yes they're very leading questions and when you build up a yes 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 <laughs> right <laughs> yeah it confirms all the evidence you wanted to give right yes. <laughs> so, yeah now sometimes they won't agree with you right but that's all right because you move on to a question that start that that makes them tell you why they don't agree right this is this is the roofing contract isn't it no well what is it then oh, interesting that's so <laughs> this is just a quote oh i see and you're the person who gave the quote, aren't you? No. Well, who did that? John Smith. And who are you? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes, because I was just going to ask you, if they say no, what do you do? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You say, okay, well, then what is it? <laughs> you know, and it does leave them a little room. That's true. Yeah. But since the question is so short, the human impulse is when they hear a short question, right? the tendency is to give a short answer. And you definitely don't want the witness you're cross-examining to uh, tell a big story. Oh, they can if they want. I mean, you know, really when you're under cross-examination, you shouldn't fall into that temptation because the bigger a story you tell, the more likely you are to contradict yourself. That's a tip for the witness being cross-examined. Yes. <laughs> right. On and on and on because- oh. of yeah, <laughs> it gives you just enough rope, right? <laughs> yeah, that's interesting because I think a lot of people I've talked to, they're, they're like, but I really want to explain myself. Yeah, there's no need. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you do get, now, 
once you've been cross-examined, right. right, there is a right of reply. All right. Okay. Now, it can be difficult when you're the witness. For example, if you're a um, self-represented litigant yes. and you're the witness, it can be difficult to remember what you wanted to reply to. That's true. I don't, I haven't seen it done, but if it, I, I were in that position, my tendency would be to take a notebook with me to the witness stand when I'm being cross-examined. Wow. Right? right. And as the person cross-examines me, mm -hmm. just to jot down, right, to make a note, because you do have a right of reply and you can reply to something in the cross-examination where you wanted to give a fuller answer, right? That's you true. are entitled to give a full answer under cross. Mm -hmm. it's, not that, it's not that you'll be stopped if you want to give a full answer. Right. It's just that most times when people give a long-winded answer, mm -hmm. it um, hurts more than it helps, right. I think. Right. At least that's been my experience, because, as I say, the longer you talk, the better chance you have of, of um, contradicting yourself. So the uh, really this is a fantastic tip that you mm -hmm. gave today, and that is uh, as a self-represented litigant, when you're cross examined you are allowed to have like a little piece of paper or notebook. Yeah. And, you jot and if somebody asks, you say, I'm just jotting down the pieces right. that I wanted to reply to. Yeah. Because right. otherwise, how would you, rem because the cross-examination yeah. is usually, say, at least half an hour. Or, or, yeah, can yeah, be. You really cannot remember all the points that the answer yeah. came out wrong, right? <laughs> yeah, that you, or that you wanted to say more to. Yeah. Um, now, you can say more at the time, but try to keep your answer sort of on the point and right. relatively brief, right? Mm -hmm. Just so that you don't trip yourself up. If, if you have a lawyer or a paralegal, um, that person uh, will be well accustomed to asking questions in reply, right? And they will have jotted down the places where they wanted you to say a bit more. Right. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the that's the huge benefit of yeah. having a paralegal or lawyer representative because they are able to to do this while and you're on the spot. <laughs> that's right. And they're not emotionally involved. Right. Right. You are. So it, it can make things very difficult to remember if you're anxious, personally anxious about the outcome. Absolutely. Right? The paralegal or lawyer isn't personally anxious about the outcome.